God bless you, saints. Glad to be in God's house on this beautiful Wednesday evening. We are so blessed and highly favored with the Lord. Praise God for this beautiful day. How many thank God for this day? Praise God. This is the day in which the Lord has made, and we can rejoice and be glad. And God has been so good, so kind, so merciful unto each and every one of us. So we are so blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer. Uh, let's continue to pray for one another, pray for all our sick and shut in, all those that are going through, those that are hospitals and nursing homes, that God will continue to come by and bless um, the saints, those that are in the world, that God will just continue to um, uh, just come by. And as he says, he will um, he reigns on the just as well as on the unjust. And so we're praying that God will continue to bless um, those uh, in the world. So let us pray. God, we thank you for um, this day. God, this is the day which you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. God, we are so blessed and highly favored of you. God, we thank you, God, for just life, health, great portion of our health and strength. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy. God, how you uh, woke us up to see another beautiful day. God, we thank you, God, for how you um, shined on us on today. God, how you, um, God, we walk throughout your beautiful earth on today. Oh, God, we thank you, God, for um, just um, seeing your glory, oh, God, and some more of your glory on yesterday. God, those who um, watched the eclipse of oh, God and um, how even the sun and the moon, oh God, obey you, oh God, and we praise God that uh, we just want to be your people, oh God, and that we will be willing and obedient, oh God, that we will eat the good of the land. So bless us, lead God, and direct us, God. Bless this house, oh God. Bless your people, those that are sick, those that are going through um, different circumstances, oh God, the body of God. We pray you just come by, just continue to bring healing, oh God, and restoration, oh God. Bless, oh God, finances, oh God. Bless our families, oh God, our um, loved ones, those who do not know you in the pardon of the sins. We're praying that you will come by and touch them, oh God, that they will cry out and say, what must I do to be saved before it's everlasting too late? So, Father, we pray that your spirit just be with us, oh God, on tonight, um, that you will lead God and direct um, as we strive just uh, continue to look at your word and apply your word to our life. Oh God, we pray for the world over kings, leaders of all nations. God, Father, oh God, help us lead God and direct us. Oh God, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Dave. Amen. God bless you. Our script lesson tonight is going to be coming from 1 John, the fourth chapter, and we'll begin at the seventh verse. And the reason on this why I said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. But he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Said, beloved, if God so loved us, we also are to love one another. God bless you. Amen, thank God for the reading and the hearing of his holy word, encouraging us to love, continue to love one another. Amen. We know that God is love. Amen. It's taught us to love one another. So we praise God for the beautiful scripture lesson. Again, thanking God to be found in God's house on this beautiful Wednesday evening. I'm thanking God for just life and health and strength. Thank God for um, all his wonderful blessings that he has bestowed upon each and every one of us. Thank God. Amen. As I mentioned, even in prayer, um, um, those who um, had glasses and looked up at the um, the eclipse on yesterday, and I was, uh, who wouldn't serve a God like that? that is, God is so amazing in this, um, in this allness and the things that he does, and I thank God um, just to see his glory um, even in that, and I pray that um, as men and women looked up that they could just think about God and think about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so I thank God. So let's get into the word on tonight, and we're going to go to Joel, the book of Joel, our fast, period of fasting, as well as prayers coming up, uh, Lord be willing, this coming Friday, and just want to um, just kind of just um, uh, look at Joel, the second chapter. Uh, we do read it during a period of fasting as well as prayer, just want to look at it and, um, and um, look at a few things that was going on with God's people, and, uh, and then we'll get out of here and just be encouraged to come back. Um, God see fit and willing on Friday. Joel, the second chapter, um, I'm going to begin reading at the 12th verse, and um, I'll read down to the 15th verse, um, and then we'll look at um, kind of 
chapters 1 and a little bit of chapter 2. Um, so the Bible says, Therefore also now saith um, the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all of your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, and for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. The Bible said, who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a, a meat offering and a, and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast, call a solemn assembly. And I want to just kind of kind of teach from uh, just simply the Bible says um, in, that, in that 12th verse and that 13th verse, well, in the 13th verse it says, and rend your heart and not your, your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. And I want to just um, encourage us um, as we're um, preparing our hearts for a period of fasting as well as prayer simply to return to the Lord. I want to encourage the church on tonight to return to the Lord. As we look at this chapter, and we read this chapter um, beginning Friday, we'll read it every day of the period of fasting as well as prayer. And if you read it and kind of looked at it, it's, it's God, um, God's people are under the judgment of the Lord. Um, Joel doesn't necessarily tell us what's going on, but we do know that God's people have become complacent. And they had um, had a spirit of apathy or just laziness when it came to the things of the Lord. And Joel, through the prophet Joel, God is encouraging and he's telling them, he's, he's talking about judgment. He's going to pour out judgment upon them if they did not return to loving God and honoring God like God should be loved and how God should be honored. And how many know, amen, we don't never want to get in a spot where we are, we've gotten lazy on God. Amen. We don't want to get complacent in our walk with the Lord. And this is what happened to God's people. So they had gotten a little, they got lazy, got apathetic. That it was kind of uh, kind of haphazardly kind of doing the things of God. And amen, how we, it was kind of uh, treating God kind of like anything else. And, and, and God was telling them that he's going to pour out judgment on them. We're going to read it in a little bit. Amen, how, amen, they had to return back to the Lord. And how many know it is time for God's people to return back to the Lord? As we want the, the world to change, we want our loved ones to be saved, we want our families to get to know Jesus Christ, we want those that have walked away from Jesus Christ to return to Jesus Christ. But how I many know God's people must return back to him? Amen. That we must love our God with the all of us, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might with all of our strength. Amen. We as God's people cannot become complacent or compromising or have a spirit of apathy because how many know our families are looking at us? And it's, I'm going to encourage, amen, as we read the scripture, amen, he tells them how, and how they ought to get it together. And that's why, amen, he tells them it's time to fast. And it's time, amen, to fast. That's why Joel comes and says, hey, if we, we've gotten complacent. we got a little bit lazy on God. We ain't doing treating God how we ought to treat God. God said he's going to pour out these things, amen, on us. But hey, he said if we just return, amen, maybe God will, we're going to get there, maybe God will do some things. He will pour out blessings upon us. So, Amen. I want to encourage us on tonight. Amen. Wherever you may be in your walk. Um, amen. I'm asking us all to ask God to just give you a little bit more fire. Can y'all say amen? That God, that you would give us a little bit more passion for you, a little bit more, amen, desire. Amen, wherever you are, amen, I know some, amen, if you're here tonight, I know that you're loving, amen, God, you want more of God. But I'm asking God, amen, if you're here, if you're streaming, amen, ask God, amen, to, to fill you with more of him and less of the world. I know. Ask God to give you more of a, a passion to do his will. Amen. To do, to walk according to his word. Amen. To be pleasing in his sight and less carnal. Amen. 
So, amen, we're going to get, amen, what, amen, just help us to return to the Lord, amen, and that God, amen, is going to talk first about the problem, what was going on with God's people, because God said, I'm going to pour out some things, amen, on you. The Bible says, amen, let's talk about the problem. The Bible says, in, amen, verses 1 and 2 in chapter 1, that's, the Bible says, the word of the Lord that uh, came to Joel, the son of Puphel, Puphel, I'm sorry, he says, hear this, ye old men, and ye Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Uh, Joel tells him, he says, tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. The Bible says in the four thirds, here's the part of the problem, here's the problem, the Bible says, amen, that, amen, they were facing devastation. So, amen, God, amen, he's telling them, he says, I need you to tell your children, I need you to tell your children, and they will tell their children, and then I need them to go tell their, their children, amen, to the next generation, I need the old men to get this, amen, because we are facing devastation as a people, amen, that we're about to be wiped out off the earth. And the Bible says, he said, that which the plumber worm have left, he says, have the locusts eaten. And that which the locusts have eaten, have the canker worm eaten. Have left. I'm sorry, locusts have left, have the canker worm eaten. The Bible says, and that which the canker worm have left, have the caterpillar, y'all with me, eaten. It's, it's desolate. It's he says, it's whatever, amen, we are facing a, a, a devastating situation. You start to think about, amen, the church world and, amen, and the people of God, amen, in its entirety, amen. How many know we got to return to the Lord because, amen, how many know the enemy wants to wipe us out? Y'all don't got to say amen. Amen. He wants to wipe us out. He wants us to get us compromising, being complacent, kind of lazy, kind of kind of coming when we won't do what we want. Amen. And he tells them, he says, amen, God is going to bring such a devastation. Amen. To you. The Bible says, he says, that which the pummel have left, the locusts have eaten. He says, that which the locusts have left, the canker worm have eaten. And that which the canker worm have left, he says, have the, it's nothing left. Devastation. He wants God's people, he said, they're facing devastation. I want us to really think about this as the people of God, as we start to look around, he says, things, amen, they, that one, that took that and that. He says, he says, I need you to tell your children. I need those children to tell their children. He says, even to the next generation, he said, I need to get it down to the old men. He says, fifth verse, awake. He says, ye drunkards and weep. And how all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it is cut off from the mouth. He says, for a nation is come up upon my land strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And the Bible says, he hath the cheek, he says, he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He says, my people, in the seventh verse, he hath laid my vine waste and bark my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made, y'all with me, white. They were facing grave devastation. And as we're beginning and to think about a period of fasting as well as prayer, and us as the people of God, amen, we got to think about what's happening in the church world and what is happening, amen, amongst those that we know, amen, how the enemy wants to kill, steal, and to destroy, amen. And God tells us, we're going to get there, you're going to keep me here. He says, I just want my people to come back to me. He says, because... We're facing devastation. How, amen, the enemy wants to take out young people, wants to take our marriages, wants to take, amen, those, amen. He says that what that, the canker worm didn't get, the locust guy with the goat locust didn't get, the plumber worm. He said things are gone. He says, he said, look at the trees, the vine is waste, the bark, they said the, the, the bark by my, by my fig tree have been made clean, bad. Look at the imagery. He says, he says, and cast it away, the branches thereof are made white. He says, lament like a virgin girded with of sackcloth for the husband of her youth. He says in the tip first, the field is wasted. The land mourneth for the corn is wasted. The new wine 
is drying up. It says in the oil language, he said, number one, we're, and the problem is that we're facing devastation. I really want you to think about it. I really want that to seep in, that we are facing devastation. If we don't return, if we don't love God with the all of us, if we don't give all, all that we have to God, he says we are facing devastation. Look what could possibly happen to next generations, generations after us. That's why we got to hold on to what you got. Y'all going to get me preaching and get a little more. He tells us not only are there facing devastation, but they're facing destruction. And as it, 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 the picture don't get no better, it is a bleak picture. A, he's painting a very bleak picture for the people of God. He says, in, amen, in the two and five, he tells them, amen, two and five, he says, and the noise of the chariots on the top of the mountain shall they leap. It says, like the noise of a flame, a fire that voweth, devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in a battle or race. And I don't quite get all this. This is really too much. He said, but not only were they facing destruction, he said, devastation, he says, he says, your enemies are coming to get you. He says, they are, they're, 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 they're facing, amen, the other armies that are coming, amen, that are stronger than them. They're more numerous. The sixth verse says, but their face of the people shall be much pain. All their faces shall gather. He says, blackness, seven verse, the Bible says, they shall run like mighty men. He said, they shall climb the wall like men of war. He said, they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks there he said the enemy is coming after us y'all don't got to believe it how many know the enemy wants to destroy us he wants to destroy our families wants us to destroy amen the church he wants amen he says he says i just need my people i'm gonna keep on repeating he says you're facing devastation amen my people were facing destruction amen their armies were stronger it seemed like they had more stuff amen it seemed like they were more numerous amen than the people of god he said they're so mighty amen all god teaches. he said i just want my people to return to me well, if we see the problem first, we see devastation, we see destruction. These armies are coming, the invasion of these armies are coming. They're coming to take our families. They want to destroy the, our mind, the minds of our young people. Amen, so much foolishness in the world. Amen, so much carnality in the world, so much compromise. They don't know what to believe, which way to go. Amen, the army is coming. Amen, they go to school systems. Things have changed in school, how they're learning. The army is coming, trying to take them. Amen, into, amen, ways and amen that they don't know and should not know. Amen, the army is coming to take, amen, those next generations. He says, I need my people to stick with me. And so he says, the army is coming. Eighth verse through the thirteenth verse, same book, same chapter, the second chapter. He says they were facing devastation. They were facing destruction. These strong armies are coming. They're coming. The Bible says in eighth verse, neither shall one thrust another. They shall, they shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They the Bible said they shall run to and fro in the city. The Bible says they're gonna. He said they shall run up the wall and shall climb up 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 upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. The Bible says, for his camp is very great. He is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Yah, who shall abide it? The Bible says they're going to be facing devastation. They're going to be facing destruction desolation the bible says who's going to be able to abide it says therefore also now say also now saith the lord and please get this he's get this get this he says get this he says turn ye even to me with your heart 
and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. He's saying it's going to get bad. It is bad. He said, we see the problem. He says, my people, they didn't want nothing to do with me. He says, there's going to be a pestilence in the land. Amen. It's going to be a devastating. Amen. The army is going to be so strong. Amen. They want to take overtake. Amen. To you. He says, amen. It's going to be such a hard time. He says, all I want my people. He says, he says, therefore also saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. How I many know it's time for us to turn to God with all of us? I know these messages are not big amen messages, and I'm quite okay with it. But it's really time for the church to be the church. Can y'all say amen to that? It's not time for us to be in a compromise. He's going to talk about discipline in a little bit. He's in a compromising state where, amen, we kind of don't know what we believe. Amen, we kind of want to be on the edge on this. He says, amen, great devastation is going to come. Amen, the enemy wants to take over the church. He says there are armies that are going to come destroy. He says, he says they're going to be great devastation that's going to arise. He says this is the problem. This is a major, major problem. I love what he says in 115. He says, he says, ah, alas, for the day, he says, for the day, for the, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Bible says, and as a, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. He says, the day of the Lord is at hand. He says, it's time for my people. He says, you're going you're gonna to face. If you don't want to love me, you don't want to serve me. He says, the day of the Lord is at hand. There's going to come a day, the Bible says. He says, Allah's, Allah's for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It is at hand. How many can see that the day of the Lord is at hand? There's no time for the church to be playing church. No time for you to say, you know, it's, I'm going to give up. I, I, I'm tired of going this way. And he says, we're facing destruction. We're facing, amen, devastation. We're, we're facing, amen, the discipline of the Lord of the 14th verse. He says, well, go ahead. He says, sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God. And the Bible says, and cry unto the Lord. He says, this is the problem. My people have gotten complacent. They've gotten spirit of apathy. We don't want to pray like we used to pray. We don't want to come like we used to come. We don't want to serve like we used to serve. We don't want to love like we used to love. We don't want to read like we used to read. We don't want to be the witness like we used to be the witness. We don't want to uh, uh, be the light in our homes like we ought to be the light. He says, devastation is going to come. He says, I'm, I'm, uh, destruction is going to come. And he says, I want my people to come back to me. I want to read, um, this is the only time we're probably going to, well, we'll maybe hit over someone. Let's go to Romans, the first chapter, the 18th verse, really quickly. The problem, the problem, the problem. He says, he's telling us as a church, it's not too late. I need you to come back to me. I need you to. As we'll get there, I need you to fall back in love, great love with the Lord. I need you to do all the things I've called for you to do. I need you not to compromise to those that have walked away can stand and see that you're still living it 20 years later. Can y'all say amen? amen. How, how many want folks to see that you're still living for Jesus 30 years later? When those may have walked away, you say, I'm still walking with Jesus. I'm still singing my song. I'm still, amen, amen, pray, praying unto the, amen, my, 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 my Lord. I am still pressing my way out. 20, 30 years later, still doing the same old thing, amen, serving my God. And I love what, amen, Paul warns us. He warns us about this great problem that we're having. Romans 1 and 18, y'all know this very, very well. 1 and 18, he says, 1, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. And the Bible says, and and all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And this is some praying, God, please don't allow us to be here. It says, because that which may be known of God is manifest 
in them. He says, for God has showed it unto them. He says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Y'all know this very well. 21st says, so that they are, y'all got it, without excuse. If you're listening, if you're here, church, we are without excuse. You will have no excuse for not finishing your course, for not, amen, keeping the faith. You will have no excuse for not returning to the Lord, loving God with the all of you. Stop fooling around with the carnal things of this world. You will have no excuse, amen, for walking out there, being conformed to the world and the things that are in the world. You and me will have an no excuse. I got to move because that when they knew God. God kept warning, warning, warning. But because that when they, they knew God, they, they knew God. The Bible says they glorified him not as God. Made him into something else. Made into men like man. Made into like their job, who they are, whatever. He says they, they didn't glorify him as God. And amen, they, 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 see, the, they see the eclipse. So they, they still they didn't glorify him as God. They, they see how can, amen, man could not do that. How, amen, God moves. And so the moon, of course, of course that is God. The Bible said they knew God, but they didn't glorify him as God. They put on a glass. They looked at it. They sung their songs. They, they, some folks cried, but they didn't glorify him as God. The Bible says, but they became, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. I'm going to move. I don't have time to read all this. The Bible says, we fasten themselves to become, themselves to be wise. They became fools. Thank you that we know so much. God said, I've warned you. I have warned you. I'm asking you, I'm instructing you, I'm commanding you to come back to me. Amen, let's get this thing right. He says, I, I've told you, amen, that things are going to come, that the canker worm, the locust going to come, eat up everything, destroy everything. He says, I've told you how army's going to come, amen, take everything, destroy everything. I've told you how, amen, this is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is at hand. He says, because they, when they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God. They weren't thankful. The Bible said they became vain in their imaginations. The Bible said they thought themselves to be so wise they became fools changed the glory of God into an incorruptible God the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man the Bible says he says to he says he says and to birds and four for the feeds beasts and creeping things he says wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves y'all can't tell me that this Bible does not speak to this day It speaks to this day. The Bible says, who changed, a move, who changed the truth of God. The problem, he says, things going to get eaten up. He says, he says, he says, army's going to come, they're going to take it. He says, I've told y'all that this is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is at hand. He says, y'all have gotten complacent. Amen, y'all don't care. He said, the Bible says, amen, the people of God. He said, they have changed. This is wrong. This is Paul talking to the church. He said, talking to the church. He's talking to the church. He says, who have changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature, us, ourselves, more than the creator. How many of us? thinking about just the church I'm talking to the church that we've we've we thought so much of ourselves that we we're not treating God how he ought to be treated we're not worshiping God how he should be worship it. The Bible says we, we've gone to worship ourselves. We, and this is what happened to the people in Joel say to the people of God, they got so complacent and so have filled with apathy or I don't care or I will offer what I want when I want to offer. The Bible says we have gone, the Bible says we've gone to serve and worship the creature more than the creator. The Bible says who is blessed forever. He says amen. The problem 
I'm going to go back to Joel, go back over to Joel. We see the problem. God says, this is a problem. You're facing devastation. You're facing destruction. You're facing it. You're, I'm telling you that the day of the Lord is at hand. I, what more warnings do you need? And what, what, what else can I do? I'm telling you that my, the day of the Lord is at hand. I'm telling you it's time to cry out loud and spare not. I'm telling you that the day of the Lord is at hand. And he tells them, I love the second thing that Amen Joel does here. He says, I'm telling you about the problem, but I, I want to, he offers them the plea. What should we do? Amen. As God's people, what do we need to do? I love the Bible says in that 12th verse, I read it. He said, therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me. How many want to turn to God? Amen. We've seen so much destruction in our world and our lives. How many know we need God? Y'all, y'all got me preaching. I, how many know we need God every single day? He says, Amen. Things are falling apart. Amen. The folks in the church don't want the church. We want more of that than God. He says, We are falling apart. He says, But I need my people. He says, I need them to come back to me. He tells them, turn to me. Don't turn to your family, your money, how much success you think you have. He says, I need you to turn to me. I need you to come back to me. He says, he says with all your heart. Uh, he says, I, not just that haphazardly stuff. Not when you want to, how you want to, when you want to. He says, I need you to come to me. I need you to return to me with all of you. He says, with all of your heart. He says, I need you. I, I, I'm, I'm commanding you. He says, I'm instructing you to fast. How many know we need to fast? Y'all should say, Amen. Folks say, oh, here we go again. I need to put down my plate and amen. It's going to get warm outside. Amen. How many know the church needs to fast? Amen. Jesus said this kind come by, 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 by prayer and fast. And I know many of us got a this kind in our life. And how many know we need to fast? I know in this day and time, folks, I don't, I, that's old timing. I mean, you reading Joel, I know that's Old Testament. But Jesus fasted. Yes, he did. Amen. He gives us instruction on how we ought to fast. And we need to fast. We need to fast. As it talks about, amen. How many know we need to fast for our loved ones? Amen. Your, your loved ones have walked away from God. They have turned their backs on God. Amen. They, amen. They're doing all types of things that are against God. That's why, amen, and amen, in the heat of the day, you can turn down your plate and say, God, amen, I need you to intervene in the behalf of my loved one. Her mind is going off like crazy, but I need you to turn her back to you. He says, I need you. He says, I'm instructing you. He says, I need you to turn back to me. This is the plea. He says, it says, he says, it's filled with, he says, repentance. I need you to come back. I need, he says, he says, with your all your heart and with fasting and with weeping. You know, it's okay sometimes to moan unto the Lord. Tell the Lord what is going on with you, what is happening in your world. What is happening in the world of our loved ones, amen, he says, amen, you see the devastation, how the enemy has wants to come and clear it all out. He says, you've seen, amen, I have strived, God says, I want to discipline you. I told you, amen, that this is the day of the Lord. It is at hand. You have seen how the armies want to come and tear you apart. He says, I want you, my people, to come back to me, he says, with all your heart not just let it be a song I surrender all but with all your heart but then I want you to have a mind to fast I want you to turn down amen your plate I want you to amen as Isaiah 58 says say, amen that God will come by is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness how many got somebody up in your life you're asking God to loose the bands of wickedness to amen undo heavy burdens how many got amen some heavy burdens that God I need you to come by and undo these heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free 
I still believe the word. I still believe, he says, he says, with fasting and with weeping and, and amen, amen, get all, all that pleasure and all that play. He says, it's, it's a time with some weeping and it's some time with some mourning. He said, I need y'all to come back to me. And he tells him, amen, and, 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 and these days they were tear their clothes off, amen, off, and they, amen, a, a, emphasizing how much, amen, of, of a sack of how much they want to give to God, how much, amen, is what the Bible said. He said, I will need y'all, amen, not to do this. He says, I want you to rend your heart. Get your heart right. He said, he said, rend your heart, rip your heart, amen, rend your heart, amen, and not your garments, amen, I need my people. He said, yeah, Lord have mercy, if my people, which are called by my name, would just humble themselves. He said, I need you to, he says, and rend your hearts and not your garments. He says, he says, and turn unto the Lord your God. I love what Revelation says in Revelation 2, y'all know this well. He gives them a plea. He says a plea for repentance. He says, I need the church. I need my people to be stay serious and uh, not give up the fight. I need them to know that it's not too late. I know it looks bad. I know. He said a canker worm and took it. Amen. A caterpillar and got it. And a locust came and took what the caterpillar and it said, oh, my Lord. And here comes the armies. They come to take this and do this to destroy me. And God is telling me this is the day of the Lord. And he said, oh, man, but God is saying it's not too late. I need my people, my people, amen, to rend their hearts. Come back to me with the all of them. I need them to, amen, weep sometime, cry sometime, fast, amen. As the Bible says, and rend your heart, not your garments. He says, he says, and turn ye, he says, turn unto to the Lord your God. Revelations 2, y'all know it well. He says, Revelations 2, I'm going to come back to Joel. Revelation 2 and, let's start at that second verse. Revelation 2 and 2, the Bible says, in Revelation 2, he says, I know thy works <laughs> and, thy la and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst, canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. And I read that, and I was praising God for just the example, and I was praising God for this church, in that I know many have been fighting for a long time. They're coming for a long time, and, and Jesus says, I, I know your labor, and I, I do know your patience. I know how hard. You have been working. I know, I know, I know, I know you've been coming. I know you've been coming. I know you've been singing. I know you had to sing twice. And I know, amen, you had to come and you had to do multiple things. You had to take off your robe and go do this. And I know you had to do, I know, I know your patience. I know you've been waiting for me. You've been waiting. I know. And how you can't even bear, you can't even bear them which are, uh, which them are evil and has tried them which are apostles and, and, have, and are not and has found and you have found them liars. The Bible said, and has born and, and have patience for my namesake has labored you have labored in his namesake and the Bible said and I praise God he says and has not fainted <laughs> and Jesus says nevertheless I have somewhat against thee I know you said, I don't know what to, he says, I, I know you've been working, you've had patience, you've been coming all these years, you've been coming, you've been fighting through heartache and pain, sorrow, sickness, death, all these things have come your way. He said, you have born, you've had patience, you have patience, you've been fighting, you've been laboring. But he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against 
And I'm encouraging us as we're getting ready to journey through another period of fasting as well as prayer. Lord, he says, because thou has left, come on, wake back, that, 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 first, that first love. I, I, I know you've been fighting and I know you've been coming, but he says, I, I, I got something against you that you've seen what's happening in the world. He says, and you've, you've seen the devastation is going on amongst us. And he says, I, I know, I know, and I know you, uh, we, we, uh, you just read Romans. You says how, amen, they knew God, but they didn't glorify him as God. But he said, but they became vain in their imaginations and, and says they thought themselves to becoming wise and they became fools. And you know, and then you've been coming, you've been pressing, you've been singing. He said, but I, I need you to stay in love with me. I, I need you, amen, to keep on praying. I need you to keep on pressing your way out to God's house. I need you to keep on open up your Bible, reading the word of God, not only reading the word of God, but living the word of God. He says, keep on with your first love. How many still love their first love? Yo, he said, he says, remember thou, he says, in the, remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen. You said, Lord, please help me. He says, and repent. He says, I got I to gotta, I gotta get my passion back. I, gotta, I know life has dealt me some things and some blows, but amen, God been good to me and God been faithful to me. And I, amen, it's God's, amen, by God's grace, I'm able to sing the songs of Zion on Sunday morning. It's by God's strength, I'm able to do what I got to do. Amen, it's God's strength, I'm able, amen, God been good to me when I look around how he keep on providing for me. Keep on putting shoes on my feet. Keep on putting clothes on my back. He said, I, I want you to remember, therefore, from whence thou hast fallen. Remember how you really used to really enjoy God. And that you knew, as David said, that in his presence was the fullness of joy. How you really got into God's word and you ate the word and was good to you. And how you really had passion to come to God's house and and you were like David. David says, amen, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. You were like, he said, one thing that I've desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, amen, all the days of my life. You were like, amen, amen. He says, I love to pray, amen. I wanted to talk to God. I wanted to know more about him, amen. I didn't, it didn't matter who came or who didn't came if I was broke. I called somebody, said, I need to ride to church. Amen. I got to get on my choir. I got to sing my song. I got to testify. I got to serve. I got to usher. I got to go witness to somebody. He says, remember where you have fallen from. And he says, and repent and do the, do the first works. He says, uh, or else I will come unto thee quickly. And remove thy candlestick out of his place. He says, except thou. Got with me? Repent. Joel gives them a plea. He says, it's a plea of repentance. He says, I need my people. See, this is a message to God's people. This is not a message to the world it's not a message to those. This is God's people. He says, I need you to rend your heart, not your gums, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is, he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness. I'm coming back there. And the Bible says, and repent of him of the evil. And the Bible says, he said, who knoweth? He says, who knoweth? He says, he says, if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him. God wants his people to seek his face. He says, we see the problem. We see what Job was calling for the people of God to do. But I love, as I get ready to close, as we get ready to prepare ourselves for a period of fasting as well as prayer, I love what these 14th, 15th, I'm ready, these verses teach us. He says, 
He says, if we do what God called for us to do, I am reminded of what Digger Russell would say. <laughs> Amen. If we just return to the Lord, and I know you said, I've been, I've been coming, I've been doing. He said, just love him with all your heart. Give more to the Lord. Give him of your time. We're going in a period of fasting as well as prayer. He says, let go of those pleasures. Put those things down. Pray some more. Press your way out to God's house. If it's caused you to sing, if it caused you to go pick up somebody to get to church. Amen. And Dick Russell said that the blessings, if you just stick with God, how many know the blessings? Y'all, we got some witnesses up in here. How many know the blessings will overtake you? Y'all can say amen. amen. Dick would say, I, you, you can't beat God's blessings. He, said, he says, I need my people to return to me. Come on back. Leave all that carnal, all that carnal stuff out there in the world. We don't need that. We don't want that. God been good to us. Amen. Take that stuff. Amen. Leave it out there. We want God to bless us. How many want God to bless you? I'm almost done, y'all. Amen. I want God to rain down blessings upon, amen, your house. Amen. This house. Amen. My house. Amen. Your family. Amen. My family. Your health. My health. Amen. Whatever you're asking God to do. Amen. God say, amen, my children, my grandchildren. Amen. I want God to rain down blessings upon us and the bible says who knoweth who knoweth he says god told you these things gonna take place he said but who knoweth he can he said he return and repent and leave a blessing <laughs> behind him even as a even a meat offering a drink offering unto the lord god here it is blow the trumpet <laughs> see see joel said i need my people to get right he says I need, even if some don't even see it, he says, some don't even understand it. He says, some can't see what is happening in the world, what is happening in the He says, I need, amen, it's time to blow the trumpet. It's time to get God's people attention. And it's time to wake those that have been asleep. Amen, it's time to wake them up. Amen, to camp. Amen, it's time for us to fast. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to live right. He says, blow the trumpet in Zion. He says, it's time to blow it. Amen. I, folks say, I don't want to hear that no more. He says, you got to blow the trumpet in Zion. It's time for God's people to wake up. He says, and then he says, I know, he says, this all comes with the blessing. He says, sanctify a fast. Y'all know, y'all can repeat it better than me. He says, sanctify a fast. Amen. Things that have crept in. Amen. In the midst of God's people. Amen. Little, amen. Besetting sins and weights. He says, get that stuff out of God's house. He says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Y'all. He says, it's time to call a solemn assembly. It is bad. Amen. Devastation has taken place. Destruction is amongst us. God says it is the day of the Lord. Amen. It's time for God's people to get serious with God. It says, sanctify flash, call a solemn assembly. Come on out to God's house. That's what the assembly is. Amen. Get to the house where God's people, where God is glorified and lifted up. Amen. I says, call a solemn assembly. Serious time. He says, gather the people. It's not a time for you to be about you. It's quiet. It's quiet. It's a, it's a different time. It's a different time. Ain't a, ain't a, now, you know, I, 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 I love church. I love Wednesday. I love, amen. But God said this is a solemn assembly. He said, you need to gather. You need, it's bad. Our families are being destroyed. Amen. Folks, health, amen, is on the line. I need y'all to come together and bless my name. I need the preacher to preach the word of God. I need you not only to, amen, hear the word of God, but live the word of God. He says, call a solemn assembly. Mm. He says, gather the people. He says, it's amazing. Joel was a prophet. It's amazing. When they told the people to come, they came. They gathered. 
They didn't have excuse where they had this one, I had to do this, and I had to do that. He says, gather the people, because we see the devastation is happening in the world. He says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. It was time for the elders to get up there. He says, gather the children. He says, even those that just got here, he says, those that suck the breasts, he says, those that even got married, they got to come on out. He said, let the bridegroom go, go, come forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, y'all know it, y'all can go ahead and pray. Hey, he says, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord, let them weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, the Bible says, spare thy people. Oh, Lord, y'all got it, y'all. He's telling y'all, y'all see what was happening. This is why. Joel had to call the fast. He said, things had gotten bad. Amen. The priest had to come and say, Lord, please spare thy people. He says, and give not thy heritage the blessing, what God will give to us. Don't give, don't give that over to the heathen. He says, don't, don't give not thy heritage uh, to a reproach. That, God, you've been so good. Don't let us be a reproach. He, he says, he says that, that the heathen should rule over them. Y'all, I ain't trying to have the heathen rule over us. I got to go, y'all. He says, this is the promise. He says, he says, spare thy people, Lord. Give not thy heritage to reproach. Amen. Let us be light. Let us be soul. He says, don't let, let the... Let the, he said, let the heathen, that the heathen will have rule over them. Wherefore, should they say among the people, where is their God? That's how bad. He says, y'all, we read, he says, well, didn't, didn't them Lord be jealous for his land? This is the promise. I'm going to my seat. He says, and how many praise God for his pity? He says he will be, the Lord be jealous for his land and he will pity his people. I don't have time, but he goes down on a, he said, this is the promise. He says, but I, in the 20, 21st, he says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, things that was coming to, come, coming to get you. I will drive them into a land barren. Y'all read it. It's so, he said, I will take that army that was coming. I will take them somewhere else. He says, and with his face toward the east and his hind hind apart toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and all. The Bible said his owl, so, savor, ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. 21st verse says, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do, y'all with me, great things. 23rd verse, y'all can keep on reading, because just contrast the second chapter. And he says, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bringeth, for, bringeth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. He tells, be glad, be glad, then ye children of Zion, be glad, be glad. He says, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain rain and the latter rain in the first month. God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. 25th verse, he says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, <laughs> the canker worm and the caterpillar and the plumber worm my great army, which I sent among you. He says, I'm going to give that all back to you. He says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be sad. Please read it. He says, and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Praise God. Praise God. And ye shall know. <laughs> he says, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, my people. You will know that God is in the midst of his people. You will know 
that is God that is with us. And that if God is with us, who can be against us? And if God is with us, amen, it's more than 10,000. And he said, and you're going to know that I am in the midst of Israel. Amen. God will continue to bless. God will continue to restore. He says, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And here it is again, God. And I said, thank God for Jesus. He says, and my people shall never be ashamed. Isn't it time for God's people? to never be ashamed. He says, I will do it. This is the promise of our God. Y'all know the rest. And it shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We're looking for sons and daughters to prophesy old men, dream dreams, young men, seeing vision. He said, I'm going to even pour it out on the servants, upon the handmaids. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Please read the rest. 32nd verse says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Praise God. And in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord have said. And in the remnant, those who were left, those who kept on marching, kept on standing for righteousness, those that kept on trusting God, loving God, kept on pressing on, singing your song, double Sunday, keep on serving, keep on coming, keep, he said, he said, and, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. He's going to call you. Praise God. I pray that we all have a mind simply to return to the Lord. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6, this is our theme for the period of fasting as well as prayer. Fast, weep, mourn, give everything to the Lord, and God say he's going to bless. John, the Bible says in Philippians, the one, first chapter, and that's sixth verse, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you <laughs> will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Simply work on me, Jesus. God bless you. See you Friday. Lord be willing. We'll be in prayer on tomorrow night. Let's all prepare ourselves for a period of fasting as well as prayer. Let's look to the Lord and be the smith. We be in prayer. We praying for one another. Lord, we willing you be here. Invite someone to come along with you that we will receive what thus saith the Lord. Let's look to the Lord and be dismissed. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the blessed Holy Spirit rest, rule and abide in our hearts. Now henceforth and forevermore, let us all say together, amen. God bless you, family.